Hi, my name is Brian from Denmark, your tech fan, and this is the OnePlus 9 Pro versus the Asus Zenfone 8 comparison. Please choose the highest playback settings for all of my videos on YouTube. Let's do this. Let's start off by looking at these two phones. They actually look kind of the same as if they were in the same family, just different sizes. The OnePlus is a 6.7 incher, whereas the Asus Zenfone 8 is a, only a 5.9 incher. But still, it could be a big brother, little brother. The OnePlus has a curved screen. Yeah, you can actually see it pretty easily there. Whereas the Asus has a flat panel. There is, of course, some curving to it, but it is it first starts uh, after within the bezel, you can see it right here. The feel of these two phones are very different because uh, the Asus is very, very slippery on the backside. You hear almost no touch like anything. Whereas the OnePlus has more texture to the backside, which makes for a more comfortable hold. Both of them come with a cover in the case. This cover, which has the same texture just furthering the good grip you get on this phone. The Aces also come with an acrylic cover that is somewhat more grippy. I've just found the white one where you can better see the texture. It is funny that Aces have said they have interviewed and tested this form factor with a ton of people to get it completely right. And then after they found the perfect fit for the common man's hand, then they decide to make it extremely slippery. It is so slippery that if I just have it lying on my table, I'm afraid that it would just slide down of itself. That's engineering for you. The volume up down button is actually less of a reach on the one plus than on the smaller sized Asus where you gotta go all the way up here and on the one plus it's there. And the OnePlus has this very cute physical switch between silent vibration and sound on. The Asus has just got a blue button. So both these phones have a Snapdragon processor, both have IP68 dust and water resistance for up to one and a half meters for 30 minutes, both have good screens and adjustable RAM and storage options. These things will not make much of a difference. So what will set these phones aside apart from the size? Let's look at the cameras and the UIs. This is the video on audio quality of the OnePlus Pro 9 around 2 meters distance we're shooting in 4K 60 frames a second. And this is the video on audio quality of the Asus Zenfone 8 around 2 meters distance using its main back camera we're shooting in 4K 60 frames a second. And also just as a quick reference the selfie camera on the OnePlus Pro 9 we're shooting in full HD 60 frames a second. That's where it maxes out. And also, just as a quick reference, the selfie camera on the Asus Zenfone 8 was shooting in 4K, 30 frames a second. And just a full all of the lenses on the OnePlus Pro 9, from the widest, to the main, to the zoom. And to all the way zoom in on the zoom. This is 8 times zoom on the OnePlus Pro 9. And now I've turned on super stable on both of these phones. So the picture should be now be as stable as you could possibly get. That means 60 frames a second in full HD on the Asus. And uh, something I'll just write in the graphics on the OnePlus. And now we are in 4K 30 frames a second without any stabilization on these devices. Just to check out for some nice colors on this mural of Greta Thunberg. It's the Asus Zenfone 8 on the left. And the OnePlus 9 Pro on the right. How do you think they it, they portray the colors of the sky? Is that to your liking? I can just say 
from where I look. It's somewhere in between actually, perhaps leaning most to the aces. Okay, and just to conclude on this photo and video shoot I've been out on here now, uh, my impression is that if you want the most options in like camera settings and video settings, you would go for the, the OnePlus Pro 9. And if you like the most like, just pick it out of your pocket and shoot a reasonable picture, I would go for the Asus Zenfone 8. And now for the UIs. The feel of using these phones is buttery, super smooth and delightful. Make no mistake about that. Both of them are at 120 Hz right now. Yeah, I really like actually how the OnePlus like populates the, the, with icons as you pull this one down. And the Asus of course does the same. You can decide for yourself how many icon layer rows of icons you want on your Asus of course and also on your OnePlus. So let's just compare the smoothness of the side we're scrolling here. Stop me up. I've just uh, seen a bit of Rolling Stones. No, let's not go into that. In an audio comparison between the Asus, the OnePlus and odd contender Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra, I found the OnePlus to be the loudest, but also least appealing to the ear in default settings. As an audio file, I'd go with the Asus as it has the most tweaking options, as well as it has this microphone jack, of course. You can adjust the setting of the phone's EQ to your liking, as you can see here. Put on Dolby, Dolby Atmos and all of them actually, yeah, besides the Asus, but furthermore, the OnePlus, I can't really do nothing more. I can just choose between these settings, these three, and the, nothing really much happens. So that's kind of the adjustment you can get here, whereas both on the S21 Ultra and the Asus, you got this equalizer you can tamper with. And I'm gonna show you the differences right now. Okay, so set all of the phones to max. Let's also not forget the S21 Ultra. I've just put it on this jazz setting that I prefer actually for this one. Okay, so it's not as loud as the Asus and the outdoor settings, but I still think Now you can hear it as well in this recording just of uh, the mic on my camera, but I assure you this has got more depth and more mid-tone to it, whereas the uh, OnePlus 9 Pro has got like, it just stops. Well, this just has more settings you can tweak to your liking. Both of the screens brightness burns high. I'll just pull that all the way up. And the odd contender is with us again. <laughs> it's Asus, it's 700 nits normal. And then it peaks at 1100 nits. So it's supposed it will bring it up to that if you're outdoors in the sun. Then you have a 1300 nits peaking on the OnePlus 9 Pro. So that's insane. But as you can see here, or I can see in real life, Actually, right now the Asus looks more bright, so I don't know why this is. And then, of course, the odd contender maxing out at 1500 nits. Okay, so that is something that is gonna pretty much blind you. <laughs> well, you can see for yourself that it's easily the brightest, or well, I can tell you it is in real life. And both phones include a charger in the case. The Asus have a 30 watt charger that charges to full in 80 minutes, whereas the OnePlus 9 charges to full in only 29 minutes with this insane warp charge. 65 watt charger. Okay, the screen is of course the main culprit of battery draining. So I'll just show you the battery usage you can see here. So it's, uh, well, on the Asus, 
You can see the thing that's used the most here is of course the screen. On the uh, OnePlus it says the OnePlus launcher of course I could, that could just perhaps be a synonym, synonym as you were saying Danish for the screen also but 17% that's a whopping much for like the launcher. PUBG Mobile but another thing that is a big culprit of why these phones use so much battery are the CPUs themselves. These phones are extremely even imaged and that's of course to be expected because of the Snapdragon 888 in both of them. And just take a look at this. While I stress test is a graphic durability test that I put these three phones through and just what you want to look at for here is especially stability. It says 63, 55, 67 percent all of these are low if you compare it to just some lesser power consuming uh, cpus you can see also <laughs> the exynos this is the exynos version of the s21 it just drops straight down for like five cycles this is a cycle a cycle is like one minute of you really pushing the the GPU on the phone, right? And then it just drops and stays down here because it just realized we cannot risk totally over upheating, so we just kind of pull, you know, like here. So it's actually pretty consistent, just very underachieving. You can see the Asus is a bit better going here, and you can see the OnePlus 9 Pro is just all over the place, performing well, then suffering. And it is just a terrible way to go about it. Actually, you want a steady performance if you're gaming, right? So you do not want this, <laughs> that's terrible. And you see the gap between the most, the best and the worst performance is greatest here on the OnePlus Pro 9. You do not want that if you're gaming. Okay, so if you are a gamer, then of course you do not want to burn your hands while gaming, okay? <laughs> I just want to show you this. All of them are performing, by the way, with the frame rate pretty evenly. But the temperature from 35 to 51 degrees Celsius, that is, that is too hot to hold, I must say. You cannot hold that. 43 degrees Celsius, that is like, I would put that thing down within... I would say 10 seconds perhaps, then I would not want to play at 43 degrees Celsius. Because that is also when it tops, right? And then also look at how much the battery wear while doing this graphics test. It went down 10%. The OnePlus, uh, 11% on the S21, and then a whopping 15% on the Asus Zenfone 8. I also think that is because it just let it rip uh, with the max, uh, even <laughs> at 51 degrees. That's just insane. But I, that said, I have actually played PUBG on all of these, and it's an amazing feeling on the Asus, actually. A bit of a surprise this comparison has shown is in gaming. I thought the OnePlus Pro would be easily be better gaming experience with a 6.7 inch screen than the Asus with its 5.9 screen. But just take a look at the sound of this. And what you cannot feel, I don't know if it's on purpose, I suspect it is, but when I hold this in my hand I can feel like the entire device semi rumping with the sound that this device produces. This <laughs> phone is, you wouldn't believe it, but it is amazing for gaming. And I think it's because it's inherited the ROG settings, ROG of course being Asus gaming line of phones. Both of them max out at Ultra HD, Ultra HD. So you get a very, very sweet and lovely gaming experience on these two banditas. It's just insane. Ultra HD looks like this. Take a look at the skies. Those skies are just completely... Actually, they look kind of the skies when you lie you know, on the ground and look at the skies in real life. But as I tell you, this is just amazing experience to play. PUBG on the Asus Zenfone 8. It just feels so immersive when you can feel, I can feel the sound of, of the wind on the back of my, of the back of the device on my fingers. It's just insane. And try to imagine how that would feel when there's shots being fired. It feels like every shot is right next to where you are. And not to show off or anything, but we just want it.
always celebrate with your companion. So, my conclusion is a bit of a mixed bag. Both phones are good phones, but they're not strong on battery life because of the Snapdragon 888. The OnePlus charging scheme of 29 minutes is gonna wear down the battery faster than on the Asus Zenfone. My first impression is, is that I would go for the OnePlus 9 Pro in regards to like user interface and just first impressions in size, of course. But I have, a, I have an odd feeling that in the long running, this Asus Zenfone 8 will do you much better because of its point and shoot and better battery durability. It's just, it just comes across as being like more of the long lasting phone. So if you want a year, a phone that lasts you for a year, buy the OnePlus Pro and an upgrade after a year because the battery life is truly terrible. And if you want just a little bit better, a battery life and you want a more durable phone all in all i would go for the asus Zenfone 8. and my phone pusher he also talked about the oneplus pros uh, having issues on the screen easily scratching because of the film on the phone out of the box is way too thin and provides for a false sense of security for the user which has also happened to this one by the way like key scratch right here uh, and furthermore you have other small scratches all along the way over here. And with all this in mind, what phone would I choose? I would definitely go for the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra. My name is Brian from Denmark, your tech friend, and I'll see you in the next one.